Come on, sing this with me. We worship. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He parted. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Come on, let's declare together. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. God who 
Come on, sing it again. Oh, my soul, sing to the God of the ages. Sing to the Lord of creation. Sing his praise again. Oh, my soul, sing like the heavens away. Roar like an army of angels. Sing his praise again. God, we exalt your name in this place. God, you are so worthy. And so we join with all of heaven, all of the angels singing of your holiness, of your goodness. God, we're just so grateful to be in your presence where there's fullness of joy. We just thank you. We thank you for that joy that comes in your presence comes when we gather together to lift up your name as one church, as one body. God, we love you. God, we just thank you for this time. And we declare that you are the reason that we're here. There's no name that is worthy of all of our praise, but yours. And so that's the name that we are lifting up this morning. It's Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, church, why don't you have a seat? Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently than we normally would um, this morning. Hopefully, on your way in, you were able to grab one of these little cups. Um, if you've been with us for a while, you know that we, every week, we do this thing at the end of service that we, um, that's called communion. And we do this as a reminder of Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross and to reflect on that sacrifice, what that means. When mankind introduced sin into the world, it brought all kinds of problems. God's creation was separated from him. And the perfect order, the perfect plan uh, for his creation, his design was broken and there was nothing that we could do to fix it. But so God, because he loved us so much, he made a way to restore the thing that we had broken. And through his son, Jesus, he sent him to die for us, the death that we deserve to be a perfect sacrifice, to cover all of our sins so that we wouldn't have to pay the penalty and so that we could continue to live and walk with him. And we're given this visual, this reminder, um, this example by Jesus in the Last Supper with his disciples. And they're together and he, um, after they give thanks for the food, he breaks some bread and he passes it around to the disciples and he says, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, he takes a cup and he passes that around. And he says, this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. And so as we partake in these elements, the wafer, which represents Christ's body and the juice that represents his blood, let's reflect in thanks for the sacrifice that he made for us. Let's partake in communion together.
thank you for the sacrifice. And we thank you for the cross. And we thank you for the grace and forgiveness that you so freely gave us, even when we didn't deserve it. And we thank you that while we were yet sinners, you displayed your love in the ultimate display of love by dying on the cross for us because you loved us so much. And God, we worship in the light of that this morning, the light of your sacrifice. Knowing that the kind of love that you displayed for us, we can only hope to give a fraction of that back to you. But God, we just declare together today that we love you, we thank you. And so we give you this time to worship and praise your name. Amen. Church, let's stand to our feet as we continue to worship and respond with one more song.
much. And we love, we love you because all of this is not just a story. Your salvation is real. It's real for each and every one of us. Your love for us was so immense. It was so vast, it was immeasurable that you did the unthinkable to save us. And that's why we can live. We can live to the fullest in you. Thank you so much for that. Pray that you'll open our hearts this morning and pray that you'll continue to work in this room. And everybody said, amen. All right, you can go ahead and have a seat and turn your attention to the screens. Good morning, Hills Church family. My name is Matt, and I am so excited and glad that you have joined us and are with us here this morning. Hey, if you're new or you're on the newer side, I wanna invite you right now to fill out one of our Next Step I'm New guest cards. They're located right in the seat back in front of you, and that is just an opportunity for us as a church to follow up with you to get you connected and plugged into your next step. So fill out that card, hang on to it till after service, bring it out to our one of our welcome texts, and drop it off to one of our amazing volunteers. If you're tracking with us digitally, you can also head to hills.church slash new, and we'll get connected with you there as well. Well, hey, we have two amazing dates coming down the pipeline that I want you to save. The first one is next Sunday, May 1st. It is our Welcome to Church lunch. Again, if you're newer or you just started calling Hills Church your church home the last few weeks or months, we wanna invite you next week to join us for lunch and a time and opportunity to get to know us better, who we are, our vision, our strategy, and you'll get to meet our staff as well there. But most importantly, we get an opportunity to hear from you and to connect with you. The second date I want you to save is Sunday, May 8th, which is Mother's Day. And moms, hey, we want you to know that we love you, we appreciate you, we honor you, and we wanna celebrate you big on Sunday, May 8th. We have lots of things planned in and around the campus. Make sure to join us on that date. In addition, we have child dedication happening on that day. If you have little ones who you want to be dedicated to the Lord with your church family, what better time to do that than Mother's Day? You could head to our events page and sign up and get registered for that as well. Well, last weekend we celebrated Easter. It was an amazing weekend. The energy and buzz was out of this world from everyone who was volunteering, serving, giving, attending, it was just a fantastic day. Pastor Jonathan delivered a great message. And you know what? Our kids team, let's give it up for them. They blew it out of the park. They hosted an event through rain or shine. 25,000 eggs were given out to kids and families right here in our area with an amazing egg hunt. Speaking of kids, today we are kicking off our Compassion Sunday. And hey, you probably noticed when you came into the church today, you notice our Compassion Experience, which is set up in the lobby. We are kicking off a brand new initiative with our global partner, Compassion International, where we are taking care and compassion beyond the 50 and going to the world, particularly to kids who are in need and need the hope of Jesus in their lives. You're gonna hear a lot more about that in today's message on how we can participate practically. And you're gonna hear an amazing story of hope and transformation from one of our guest speakers who are gonna be here to speak. So let's go ahead and kick it back to Pastor Jonathan as he leads us off with an amazing message. Welcome to church, man. I am fired up about today for so many different reasons, but I want to start off with a quick question, quick room survey. Um, has anybody in here ever tried an escape room before? Show of hands. Okay, was anyone really like claustrophobic or stressed out in the escape room? Just me, okay, a few of you, that's great. <laughs> Look, I had the opportunity to do my very first escape room ever with our team a couple weeks back before Easter. And uh, the whole concept, if you've ever done it before, it's a, it's a blast, it's a lot of fun. But the idea is this, you go into the room with a scenario, and then they give you a series of clues to get started, but basically you're starting from scratch, and you have one hour one hour to figure out how to crack the code and get out of the room. Now, when you go in, 
they tell you right off the bat, right, just to, you know, to help people like me who are a little bit claustrophobic, and it's, it's not like you walk in the room and the door locks behind you, and you're, they're like, hey, if you don't make it out, you're stuck. You're in there forever, right? But the idea is they say, look, at any time, if you feel uncomfortable, if you're concerned, if you're not feeling good, you can walk straight out the door that you came in. And the truth is this, we got into, you know, trying to crack the codes, trying to solve the problem. We got into the whole thing and, you know, it's fun because maybe you get one clue that leads to another clue and then somehow it connects to three other clues. And right as we're coming down the home stretch, maybe five minutes to go, felt like we strung together three or four clues in a row and we got right down to the final door. And it was the door out. And all we had to do was put together six numbers in a row from somewhere in this room that we had come across over the past hour, put them in the right order, and the lock would open and we would get out of the room. I don't know, we probably tried 30 different combinations of those six numbers. We just couldn't figure out what order those six numbers. We had the right numbers. The clue was somewhere in the room for the order. We couldn't figure it out. And we had the big 10, 9, 8. The countdown was happening. And we're punching them in, punching them in. It was like, eh. We failed. We didn't get out of the escape room. Not proud to admit it, but it's true. We did not get out of the escape room. Now, why do I share that? Why do I share that story? A couple reasons. One, today. It's Compassion Sunday, and we are launching into something that we have been planning, we've been praying for, we've been excited about for a long time. But the truth is this, Compassion International is an amazing organization that is helping millions of children across the world escape from the reality of poverty. And the truth of what we are dealing with here in America, and look, friends, poverty is real here. We're not minimizing anything that we're facing in our own country. But the truth is this, for many of us, for all of us in this room, most of the people in this country, there is a big, massive door, and, and look, that door can be hard to find. There are personal issues that people face. There are, there's deep trauma that leads to poverty. There's all these different things, but in America, for the most part, there's a big, massive door with no lock on it that says, walk through here and you don't have to be in this room anymore. Walk through here and you can have fresh water. Walk through here, you can find a shelter. Walk through here, you can enter some program for rehabilitation. Just walk through the door. Now, a lot of people choose not to walk through the door, but the door is there and it's not locked. But when you look at the globe, and when you hear stories like we're gonna hear today and you begin to look at children in situations like the ones that we're gonna talk about today, what you begin to realize is that for many, many people across the globe, they're inside a room called poverty and they cannot figure out the code. They don't even have clues on how to figure it out. There's not an open door into a better life right there that's available to them. And friends, what I love about today is this, and it's, it's an, a proven, statistically documented thing. We have the chance through compassion to sponsor a child and give them a door out of poverty. Friends, anyone with me today at all on this one? This is huge. We have the opportunity to say, here's an unlocked door into a better future for you, into a new experience for you, into opportunities and education and health care for you. It can change the trajectory of a person's life, and we have the chance to do that today. Friends, just putting all the cards on the table, what we are doing today as a church, could not be more excited about it, is we are attempting, and we're not attempting, so many cards were taken at the first service. Our goal is to launch a child development center in a place where compassion has never been. Our goal as Hills Church is to sponsor 300 kids and literally fully sponsor an entire village in Maranhão, Brazil. I figured it out since last week how to say it. Let's go. Our goal is not just, hey, a few kids, but it's actually to, to sponsor an entire village as a church family 
and to launch a child development center where there's never been one among people who make about $1.75 a day. About $1.75 a day. At the beginning of the year, we had a Vision Sunday, and we were looking forward. We were looking ahead to 2022, and we began to identify some different things that we said, man, we want to lean into these things as a church family this year. We, we want to continue leaning into the next generation. We want to continue leaning into building community. We want to continue hitting the gas on local outreach. But number one, we want to have a global impact for the glory of God and the fame of Jesus Christ. We want to make a global impact. And friends, here's what I believe. I believe this so deeply in my soul. You cannot be a Jesus-following Church, you can't be a Christian church if there's not a sense of a global vision. If there's not a sense of a global vision for the cause of Christ, Jesus himself, the very last things he said to his followers, his disciples, the last instructions he gave was go and make disciples, not just in Judea, not just in Samaria, but to the ends of the ends of the earth all the way to the ends of the earth. And the gospel has been going to the ends of the earth through missionaries, through organizations like Compassion. And what I love about Compassion is not only are they meeting a very practical need among the poorest of the poor in the world, they're doing it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So it's not just a practical need. They're meeting the greatest spiritual need of every child in the program by pointing them towards Christ and doing it in partnership with a local church. In partnership with a local church. And friends, look, we are a church that values practical acts of compassion. If you've been around here, you've heard the phrase for the 50, and it's this initiative that we believe God has given to us. We, we are a church located on the 50 corridor. Right here, Highway 50 goes right by us. And we believe God has given us a vision to reach the 50 corridor through practical acts of compassion. We, I mean, just thinking back through this last year, 19,000 plus people were served through our For the 50 initiatives. 70,000 plus pounds of food were given through our food pantry distribution. 1,378 gifts were donated and collected for teens in our Christmas Around Town initiative of around $35,000. Let's go, church. That was amazing. I think back to 75 people found hope and refuge on our campus hosted by the Red Cross during the Caldor fire this past year. So many things happened and we know in our heart that this is part of the doorway to the gospel going out, especially in our culture. One of the fun things that we got to be a part of and we raised money for this during our Christmas generosity moment, we said, man, we wanna build five rooms through an organization called Sweet Dreams. And Sweet Dreams partners with families who have children facing terminal illness. And we kind of uh, come in like extreme room makeover, move that bus, you know what I'm talking about? And what we do is we just get to partner with these families and say, hey, there's a church that loves Jesus and we want him to know how much he cares about you and what you're facing. So we're gonna give your child an awesome room. We're just gonna completely make over this room as a sanctuary for your child who's going through some really impossibly hard things. We've already finished two of our five rooms this year. We're moving on to number three. And this one was recently finished for a young man named Victor. Another one was completed last month for Carter. And you can just see these spaces, but friends, it's the practical acts of compassion. It's the generosity of this church that lets a, lets a family know, that lets a person know, that lets a local business owner or first responder or a teacher know, wow, not, there isn't just some ethereal God out there who might care about my life or not, I'm not sure. There's a physical representation of somebody who says they know him personally through Jesus Christ who is practically caring for me and showing me that this God is real and loves me. Friends, that's what it looks like to be the hands 
and feet of Jesus. And we know earlier this year, we, we were able to jump into partnership with Word of Life Church in Ukraine and Convoy of Hope, helping refugees who were fleeing Ukraine. And just an update on Dimitri, we, we did get word from him. Praise God, not only was he released, which many of you heard about several weeks back, but he's now been safely, um, he's now with his whole family safely gotten out of Ukraine. And so our hope and prayer is that we continue to partner with Word of Life Church in the days ahead. But man, our first prayer was for Dimitri's safety and he is safe along with his whole family, which was a massive answer to prayer for us. But it was funny because my goal in helping Ukraine, we're like, well, maybe we can raise $15,000 to help refugees in a, a local church there right in the mix. We threw out the opportunity to give generously and you guys, you know, you didn't give 15000 You gave over $50,000 to help Ukraine. I love being a part of a generous church. I love it because generosity changes things. It's like the fuel for the engine of the gospel. And we've got to jump into partnership with FIRM, which is the Fellowship of Israel-Related Ministries who are reaching the Middle East with the gospel throughout all the land of Israel and around Empowering Lives International Global Fellowship, and then today we are launching our international partnership with Compassion. And friends, I know many of you have probably heard of Compassion through their child sponsorship program, but what is so unique for us today is the opportunity for our church to launch a child development center, as I said, and to walk with a local church in Maranhão, Brazil, for years to come, through sponsorship, but also just through this, this collaborative effort where we get to go down and encourage them. We get to go down and have our lives changed as we experience what God is doing among them. And we get to help the children of this village, help reach the children and the families with the gospel through sponsorship. And this is an opportunity for our church this is a brand new opportunity. Nobody else in the world right now has access to this village, and we get to be a part of launching this. Here's why this matters. One of the biggest themes of the Bible is this idea of light. It shows up over and over again in Scripture. John 1, verse 4, it says, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, it says, in him was life, that means if you don't have Jesus, you're not connected to the life of God, and that life was the light of men, of mankind. So there's this life that's in Jesus, and he is known as the light of the world, the light of the world. It also says in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4, Paul is saying, he says, if our gospel is veiled, if people can't see the truth of the gospel, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing. There's a lot of words coming up, but just stick with me. The light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. That was a mouthful. The light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Who is the image of God? So the gospel is like light. It's like light when you see that God loves you and died for you and rose again for you. It's like suddenly the spiritual darkness is removed from your life and suddenly all of life, all of the world makes sense. The light of the gospel of the glory of God who is, the, who is Christ, who is the image of God. Some of the core pillars of our church, why we exist, says this, we exist to help people encounter Jesus to experience growth, to grow in their walk with Christ, to find community, deep friendships and relationships with others, and to serve others. And the reason that one serving others is on there is because Matthew 5, 14 to 16 connects, don't miss this, there's a connection between the light of the gospel, the light of the world, the light that God wants us to represent, and our, our good deeds of compassion. There's a connection between these two. Here's what it says. It says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Me, I am the light of the world. A city set on a hill can't be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. 
In the same way, let your light shine. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. How do people see? How do they see the life that's in Jesus? How do they see the gospel? They see it through your generosity, through your good works. I thought about this. And Rachel, you can, you can hit the lights on this one. But I thought about this because when Jesus says, you are the light of the world, what he's talking about, what the ancient Near Eastern people knew and believed was the light of the world was the sun. The sun was the thing that gave light to the world. And so when Jesus says, you're called to be the light of the world, what he's saying is you're actually called to shine like the sun in its brightness. It's really bright. That's the brightest light on earth. It's the sun. And as we begin to move into acts of compassion, he connects these two things with good works and shining the light of the gospel. He says every time you do something, whether serving a neighbor, jumping in to serve on Love the 50 Week, jumping in a For the 50 initiative, serving in our kids' building on a Sunday morning. Come on, Jesus. It's about to get real bright if you serve over there. That's a sacrifice. That's a cross people have to bear. It's amazing. But it's kind of like this. It's like, okay, level one, let's just move it forward, right? A little bit of light starts to shine as we begin to step into this reality of serving others. And then as we, as we launch Love the 50 Week, and man, now we got 52 projects and we're serving nine different cities, almost 20,000 people along the 50 corridors. Like, man, things get a little brighter, right? It moves forward even more. It's like God is cranking up the light. He's beginning to shine through us brighter. And then, man, an international crisis drops in Ukraine and there's a, a call to give generously, and the church responds above and beyond to help with refugees and to help with a local church family over there. And it's like, man, starts to get even brighter. The light begins to go up. People begin to see. They begin to see the good works. They begin to see Jesus through us as a church family. And then an opportunity arises for us to launch a child development center among the poorest of the poor in the earth to sponsor an entire village of kids. And it's like people begin to see brighter and brighter and brighter and it just begins to shine like the light of the world. Friends, this is why we do what we do. This is why we're here. To shine a light on the Father, to shine a light on Jesus, to show the world the love of God through practical acts of compassion and by preaching the gospel. And Jesus connected the two. He said, look, when you go out, when you make disciples, when you share this good news, do not forget the poor of the earth. Matthew 25, Jesus says it like this. It says, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it, to one of the least of my brothers or sisters, you did it for me. Friends, there are certain things in the New Testament that are just so obvious. Whether you're a Christian or not, whether you love Jesus and follow Jesus or not, whether you believe in God or not, the whole world believes in this reality of, man, we should care for the poor. For those who've been given much in life, we should share with those in need. It's one of the realities of Christianity that nobody says, oh, that's a bad idea. Uh, yeah, don't do that. that. Why would anyone do that, right? No, nobody, nobody contradicts this. Nobody comes against this. They say, yeah, that's what we should do. Absolutely. And friends, this is an opportunity to do that. And Jesus says, part of making disciples, part of reaching the world is always going to be connected also to caring for those in need. And friends, we have 
300 kids. Here's the amazing thing. The village itself is 200 kids. 300 involves sort of the next concentric circle of villages around. We have the opportunity as a church to reach children and families in an entire radius around this village in Maranhão, Brazil. $38 a month. A birthday gift once a year. Letters, relationships, and friends, the opportunity to go down, to meet the families, to look the mother or the father in the eye when they say thank you. Thank you for giving my child an opportunity that they never would have had otherwise. $38 a month, that's like, for my world, it's like two large pizzas. <laughs> my kids love pizza. Maybe seven large lattes from a Starbucks. Eight specialty ice cream cones. Four trips through In-N-Out Burger. That one's on me, I'm convicted. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Friends, we wanna show a quick video of who compassion is, how this works. Then we're gonna hear from Eunice, who has an amazing story, an amazing testimony that she wants to share with you. But first, check out this video for some more information. The church is God's hope for the world. And right now, there are over 400 million children across the world living in extreme poverty. 400 million children in need of hope. This is why Compassion International exists. For over 60 years, Compassion has partnered with the church to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. At its core, Compassion is a child development organization that cares for children in poverty through child sponsorship. But this kind of sponsorship looks different with Compassion. So what does different look like? First, it looks like the church working together. We partner with churches in the U.S. to sponsor children and with over 6,000 churches in developing nations to deliver resources and programming to those children throughout their entire childhood. This kind of sponsorship looks like relationships. Compassion connects one child with one sponsor to help the child achieve his or her God-given potential. The relational investment made through a sponsor's letter to their child is often the thing that helps that child believe that they don't have to live in poverty forever. This kind of sponsorship looks like holistic care. Children sponsored through Compassion receive physical care, educational care, social care, and most importantly, spiritual care, all from their local church. In the last year alone, over 125,000 children made first-time decisions to follow Jesus. That's one every four minutes. And for your church, this kind of sponsorship looks like the Great Commission. By partnering with Compassion, your entire church is equipped to serve as global missionaries. And the result is that powerful transformation takes place on both sides. Children meet Jesus and are discipled in a local church. And here in the U.S., sponsors in your church become more globally aware, more engaged, and more generous. This is what sponsorship with Compassion looks like. Friends, I want to invite Eunice out here to share her story with you. And can we please give her a warm standing Hills Church ovation? Good morning, church. I am so excited about Compassion Sunday. Are you all excited? Well, my name is Eunice, and I was born and raised in Uganda. I've been living in Texas, so I got a little bit of Texan in me, so I say I'm Ugandan Texan. Yo, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm here. I'm going to talk about my story of how I grew up in poverty and me getting hope through compassion. So at the age of four, my father passed away, and... My mother was only a stay-at-home mom, so she could hardly take care of five children. Folks, when I tell you I grew up in absolute poverty, I mean absolute poverty, where access to clean water was a serious problem. So because of the poverty we grew up in, and my mom did not have a job at that time, 
she could only afford a one-roomed house. To many of you here, you would refer to that as a shack. And when I remember in that one room that I grew up in, we didn't have beds. We only had one couch. So my siblings and I refer to the couch as the trophy couch. So as many parents, you know how to discipline your kids. So my mother used this couch to discipline us. So whenever we behaved well or performed well in school, then we had the opportunity to sleep on the couch. Otherwise, everybody would be on the floor. So in the community I grew up in, it was too rough. We had drunkards, um, robbers, child traffickers, we had prostitutes. And in my community, we had one major thing in common, and that was poverty. People struggled to raise their families. So in Uganda, when you have daughters, you got girls. It's seen as a source of wealth, because when you marry the daughters off, you get what they call dowry. And this dowry is in the form of cattle, uh, goats, chickens, or some foodstuffs. So many families that struggled had to give in their daughters into early marriages. We were four girls, and I'm so glad my mother struggled to keep us, and she never gave us any two marriages. It is so sad. Many of my childhood friends died of HIV at a very young age. So because my mother could not afford to keep all five children in school, my young sister and I had to drop out of school. So we had to contribute to the family income. And I vividly remember sitting in the marketplace by my mother selling tomatoes. On a good day, when we had customers, that meant a meal for us. And like any other business, you're going to make losses. So there are times we went home with a whole heap of rotten tomatoes. But as kids, we were hungry, so we had to find a way to survive. My siblings and I were the kids in the neighborhood who tried to scramble through people's garbage cans just to look at, eat something, eat their leftovers. But through compassion, I found hope. And today, when I talk about compassion, I talk about the love, my encounter with Christ, my physical needs were taken care of, and I was able to get an education. When I talk about love, I talk about the love that I got from my sponsor, Julie. Julie loved me, because in every of her letters, she emphasized how much she loved me and cared for me. I tell people, Julie was the other mother. She compensated for what my mother couldn't do. My mother was never expressive. I know many young girls, we look for love, but I'm glad Julie guided me on what to do, and she always reminded me of how much I was loved. Growing up as a kid, I was so embarrassed of the poverty that I grew up on. I wanted the nice shoes, the beautiful dresses, the Barbie dolls that my other friends had. But because we were poor, my mother could not afford them. Julie always reminded me, Eunice, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that has guided me growing up as a girl. Through compassion, I encountered Christ. So compassion partners with local churches in the community. So every sponsored child has the opportunity to go to the center project so for us, we used to go to the center project every Saturday. On that day, we always played together. They taught us the word of the Lord. We would write letters to our sponsors and receive back letters from our sponsors too. So as me as Eunice, I always looked forward to that day. I was a very keen kid. So they always taught us how to memorize the Bible. But there was one thing that I really loved, and that was porridge. So porridge is corn flour mix of water and sugar. So that corn flour led me to Christ, and this is how. So the more I memorized the Bible verses, and the more I grew, these words started making meaning to me. So at the age of nine, when I was at a church camp, I was able to give my life to Christ. <laughs> so 
So, my sponsor, Julie, always sent us a birthday gift or a, and a Christmas gift. So this money that she sent, it was always an extra income for our family. To me, when I was growing up, eating chicken was a, was a luxury. So we were always lucky to have chicken on Christmas or Easter. So when I moved to the United States, I asked my friends to take me to a place where I could eat some chicken. And guess where they took me? They took me to KFC, y'all. <laughs> So I sat down on a whole bucket of chicken. I had never seen that much chicken in my life. <laughs> so compassion enabled me to get my first pair of shoes. At the age of nine, I was able to get the pair of shoes. In Uganda, the floors are not cemented, so we have what we call jiggers. They crawl through the feet of people. So in order to get the jigger out, they have to poke your skin, and this exposes you to tetanus. So for $38, I had health insurance. To us, health insurance was a luxury, but I'm glad my sponsor enabled me to have a healthy life. In Uganda, we have malaria, so we were able to buy mosquito nets. One out of five children dies of malaria before they get to their first birthday. My sponsor, Julie, put me in school from when I was in middle school and all the way through college. And I have a bachelor's degree in statistics from the best university in Uganda. Today, I'm a sponsor of two girls, one from the Philippines and another from Burkina Faso. I also work as a registered nurse in a long-term care facility in Texas. Any old people in here? I love my old people, y'all. <laughs> so today, I encourage you. You may be that sponsor a child has been praying for to change their future. Today we are excited to partner with Brazil. You may be that change in a child in Brazil. These kids may turn out to be of importance in that community. They may be that policeman, that pastor, that nurse, that doctor, that president. And I encourage you to pick a packet and sponsor a child. The Bible says, whatever you do to the list of my brothers, that you do unto me. Thank you all so much. So much, Inez. Thank you so much for Thank sharing. You. Thank you. Mm. I um, I got word this morning that right here. In the state of Ranjajo, Brazil, in a village, there are some pastors and families and children who are praying for us today. They know that this is happening right now and all across America, every employee of Compassion International is praying right now. We've already had Gosh, over 70, maybe close to 100 kids sponsored at the first service. And this is an opportunity, friends, for us to be a part of someone's story, just like you heard that Julie was a part of Eunice's story. To be a part of opening that door for somebody out of poverty, where maybe that door has felt locked and there is no way through. But in the name of Jesus, we get to help. Friends, it's a chance for our light to shine so bright. It's a chance for us to be partnered with a church, an extension of Hills Church in Maranhão, Brazil. A chance for us in the years ahead to go down there to meet these kids, to meet these families, to serve at that church, to encourage, to be encouraged. And so here's how we're gonna end our service today. I'm gonna invite everyone to consider this and to pray. My family, we're all in. And I wanna, I wanna invite you to consider this $38 a month, the impact that it can have on a child's life, healthcare, education, gospel-centered teaching through a local church practical acts of compassion and 
The way this works is this. These packets, they represent one child, the child that you see on the front of this packet. This packet is nowhere else in the world. It is right here. And so friends, when you come down forward to pray and to to look at these names and these children, there will be uh, stations set up in the back and the left, right where the prayer walls are. You are looking at the only packet for that kid anywhere. And here's what I have to say. Do not take a packet unless you're going to sponsor a child because if this packet leaves and is not filled out, then that child does not have an opportunity to be sponsored. But what I wanna do is this, is I wanna encourage you. In a minute, I'm gonna pray. Our band's gonna come out. We're gonna are gonna sing Good, Good Father, and then you're gonna have a chance to come forward to finish what we started, to help us launch a child development center where there is nothing that is available to these kids in a rural village where they make $1.75 a day. You have a chance to take the packet back to your seat to fill it out. Parents, you have a chance today before two o'clock to take your children through the journey, which is in our lobby, where they can see and experience how millions of children actually live around the world. Friends, this is an opportunity for us to obey the Great Commission and obey the Lord's invitation, the Lord's exhortation for us to care for the poor of the earth. I love it because a gentleman after the first service (laughs) I think he started on this side and he took about 11 kids. I was like, that's a lot of letters. He goes, I know, it's a football team. It's a full football team, 11. Another man took 10. So yes, can you take more than one? Yes, you can. But at the end of the day, it's it's a relationship. It's a chance for you to speak into a child's life that they are loved, they are seen by God, they're fearfully and wonderfully made. And church, I believe we can do this. I believe we can launch this development center as a church. And we can have an extension of Hills Church supported by Hills Church in Maranhão, Brazil. So please, when you come take a packet, fill it out here in the room, and then you're gonna turn it in on the patio to our team who's ready to take you through the next steps there. But you're gonna, you can take it back to your seat as the worship is going. You can head to the patio and fill it out there if you have any questions. But again, this, every child here today on all of these walls and on these tables is a child represented in this specific village that our church gets to be a part of launching a child development center. These are not um, anywhere else in the world except for our church right now. And so friends, let's be the church. Let's be generous. Let's be a part of changing some stories, amen? Let me pray for us, and then I'm gonna invite the band out. And let's all stand as I pray, and then you're welcome to come down front to head to these side walls and to begin praying over how the Lord would lead you. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for Compassion International. Thank you for Eunice and her story. Thank you for the millions of children that are getting lifted out of poverty by this amazing organization. And Lord, right now, thank you for the opportunity that our church has to be a part of helping these children find you, find Christ, have sustainable health care, find community, find encouragement, find love, find an education, find a future. Lord, I pray that you would move on our hearts Lord, I ask all this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. I wanna invite you to come down forward to see and pray if the Lord would have you sponsor a child today, also at the walls, the prayer walls in the back and left rights of the room. Church, let's be the church. Tender whisper of love.
dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased in that I never
still remember two years ago, Pastor Matt and I got to go and see Compassion in Action overseas and just remember meeting with kids currently in the program and then pulling out these huge binders and flipping over page after page of letters from their sponsors. Yes. And then seeing the relationship between them and this this uh, coordinator working with Compassion, a local person uh, equipped to care and to bring the gospel to these kids. We walked away so impressed. This right here is a, is a significant moment for these children. Absolutely, and hey, just a last minute details. If you've gotten a packet, go ahead and fill that out. There's also an electronic option you can scan with your phone, a QR code if you prefer to do that. But here's the big detail. After you're done doing that, take that packet and meet our team outside on the patio. They're under tents, you can't miss them. There's signs directing you right out there. And the reason why is, is because we got to get a tear off from you. And that helps us track your child with you. Okay, so your next step is to take that packet, fill it out, or electronically, however you do it, and meet our team out in the tent area outside. That's right, thanks, Matt. Hey, in just a few weeks, as many of these get submitted, that relationship will be birthed and born, and there yes. will be more information coming to you. Thank you to those online who scanned the QR code. We got text messages from last service, people doing this at home and online. We've still got more children here, so maybe God's tugging on your heart. Maybe there's more that you can do. Maybe, yeah. maybe you have some time on your hands, and maybe there's a calling to be the relationship manager in your household to care for and to encourage these young people. We're excited for yes. that. Church, let's yes. stand together as we close. Whether those online or those in the room, God, we give you gratitude for this morning. And as I sense all of the, the, the crowd rushing onto the patio to fill these out and to submit them, Lord, we ask your blessing over this process. God, we ask your blessing over the relationship and the, the life-giving uh, moments that will come from what's being done this morning. So God, we love you and we thank you for who you are in our lives and in the lives of these children in Brazil. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, church, we love you guys. We'll see you next Sunday or out in the lobby.